Hello my friends and welcome to Fun with Plants and Cats. My name is Katie and on today's episode I am going to be taking my big 10 foot money tree to the spa. So I'm going to be doing a thorough leaf cleaning as well as a pest check. And if you like this video and you want to support me and my channel, please hit like and subscribe. And on that note, let's clean a big tree. So a while back I posted a video on how I was given a 10 foot money tree. And overall it's been doing well. I've gotten the hang of caring for it and it's grown another 6 inches. When I first got this plant, most of the leaves looked dusty and they needed to be cleaned. Some of the leaves also needed to be pruned because they had various spots and discolorations. I cleaned off most of the leaves, but I did miss a section at the top because it was hard for me to reach. All I had was a step stool. Recently, I found a spider web hanging off of the tree, and that has 1000% motivated me to give this plant a thorough cleaning and pest check. The web that I found could either be from a regular old house spider, which would be welcome, or it could be from spider mites, which are forever unwelcome. And spider mites are sap-sucking insects that can damage and kill a plant if left untreated. While I sincerely hope I don't have spider mites, if I do, maybe I'll make a video series called Woman vs. Tree vs. Mites? Plain old house spiders I would be able to see easily, but spider mites are tiny little devils that are barely visible to the naked eye. You can, however, see them easily with a microscope. And to take the guesswork out of whether or not I truly have spider mites, I bought a microscope, so I can get a detailed view of the leaves and easily identify any pests. And I will be showing you what I find with the scope later in this video. And here are the supplies I'm using to clean my tree. I bought a mister, which I'll fill with a spider mite killing mixture. I'm using a mister because it will help me cover a larger surface area than a regular old spray bottle. And the spider mite killing mixture that I'm using is made up of distilled water, rubbing alcohol, and a few pumps of liquid dish soap. I got this formula from a channel called Heart Shaped Leaves from an episode called How to Murder Spider Mites. So I'm not sure if my tree has spider mites just yet, but I'm going to use this mix preventatively. I'm also going to do this once every five days for a total of three sessions, whether I have spider mites or not. I'm using about one part rubbing alcohol to four parts water and I give it a good mix. Next, I pour some of the mix into my mister, pump two squirts of liquid dish soap, close the bottle, and give it the old shake a shake -a. shout out to Chef John, and then we wait, and pump. And whoa, there it goes. Mist and you shall receive, my friends. I could not stop it for a bit there. That was a fun little nugget, thanks mister. And to clean the leaves and stems, I'm going to use some face brushes. So the one with tougher bristles will remove any dust, sap, and mites off of the tree, and then the one with soft bristles will gently clean and buff the leaves. I'm also using a microfiber rag to clean off the leaves. My goal is to clean all of the leaves front and back, especially since spider mites like to linger on the undersides of leaves, so today will be an accidental arm day. And the first thing I need to do is move my tree to the floor. Currently I have it elevated so my cats don't get to it, which makes it appear even taller. And earlier I said it was arm day, and I wasn't kidding. If anyone here is wondering how much this tree weighs, it's 23 pounds. I weighed it. And I bet some of you have cats that weigh more than that. So last time I used a step stool to reach and clean the tree, but this time I'm going to move it next to my staircase. This tree is as tall as my staircase, and the top and midsection are accessible to me if I stand on some of the steps. Rufio was also very amused by this tree being here. He was quoted saying, 10 out of 10, wood nibble. So first, I'm going to inspect all of the leaves and stems and prune off the ones that are damaged, like this leaf over here. Translucent leaves like this one are usually caused by too much sun, and when I was given this tree, this leaf was already on there. And any damage that you see on the leaves like discolorations and holes are not going to be healthy and green ever again, so it's best to prune them off. So one of my viewers from a past video brought up how the blemishes and holes could also be due to the southern and western light that this tree is getting. The spots could be burns from the excessive sun, so I'm going to close some of my blinds so that this tree gets more shaded light. And this is the part of the pest inspection that got my heart racing, y'all. I found a web. Now, I don't see any pests on it with my eyes, so I'm going to take a Q-tip and remove the web with it. I'm then going to look at the Q-tip with my microscope to check for any creepy crawlers living rent-free. And the winner for the dustiest slash webbiest leaf goes to this one over here. So this leaf was almost at the top of the tree and I am both excited and terrified to look at the front and back with my microscope. And now it's time to prune. 
I'm either going to prune off individual leaves or an entire stem. It just depends on what condition the leaves are in. Dying and damaged leaves take energy resources from the tree. It's best to remove them so the tree can divert that energy to making new growth. And these are all of the leaves and stems that I've pruned off. And here's the q-tip I used to swab that big ol' web off the tree. And now let's take a look at all of the leaves and stems with my microscope. So the first item I'm looking at is that super webby q-tip. I put the q-tip towards the base and adjusted my microscope to get a nice close-up look. And this is what it looks like close up. So I can see some long silvery threads winding around, but no signs of mites or eggs. Mites and their eggs would be pretty easy to see under the microscope. I would be able to see them crawling around or moving, and their eggs would be close by. The eggs also look like perfect little circles that are clustered together. And moving on, I'm going to look at the front and back of this sunburned leaf. So here I'm zooming into the sunburned part, and it's actually kind of beautiful. You can see the veins and the little particles of dust on the leaves. Here I'm looking at the middle of the leaf, and once again, I'm seeing these thread-like strands and dust, but I don't see any signs of mites or eggs. And I checked the underside of the leaf as well, and there was a little piece of sap on there. And it looks pretty cool under the microscope. It kind of reminds me of a hairy icicle. And next, I'm going to take a look at that super webby slash dusty leaf. And so far, I'm just seeing more threads, hairs, dust, and these little brown spots do look like mites, but they're not. They have no legs, they're not moving, and I wasn't able to scrape them off with my finger. So I'm going to say that it's a discoloration. And here we see a close-up of the web, and I still don't see any mites or eggs. And you may notice that the web is moving a little bit, but I was pretty close next to this microscope, and the movement is caused by my breathing. I proceeded to look at all of the leaves I pruned, and I couldn't find anything that looked like spider mites or their eggs. Now, this is a big relief, but I am still going to keep doing thorough pest checks in the future, just to be on the safe side. Ultimately, I think all of the dust, webs, and debris either could have come from an actual spider that lived in this tree at some point, the previous owners had a dog that had very long hair, so I think probably the dog hair mixed in with the sap just sort of created this just web of just hair and dust. And now it's time to clean the leaves. And the first thing I'm going to do is dust all of the leaves off. I'm using a slightly dampened cloth, and I'm going over the front and back sides of the leaves as well as the stems. And since the leaves are quite large, I'm supporting the leaf with my left hand and carefully wiping with my right. Then I'm going to spray my spider mite solution on the front and back of the leaves. And I'm going to take my brush and follow the venation of the leaves to make sure I clean every nook and cranny on this entire tree. And I also have a little cup of water nearby so I can clear the brush if it has too much dust on it. Also, I'm cleaning this tree from bottom up, so the bottom leaves, the one that I can reach either just by standing or by using a step stool, I'm going to clean first, then I'm going to get up on the steps and clean the top and the midsection. Before I took on this project, I dreaded it, but now that I'm doing it, I'm actually enjoying the process, and doing this repetitive task of cleaning all of the leaves is actually meditative for me. I can put on my headphones, listen to some music, and just zone out. Also, not finding any spider mites is a huge relief. Plant care has always been a meditative process for me, and I think that's why I've grown to enjoy it as much as I do. I can break up my day by doing some work and also taking care of plants in between. Let me know in the comments below if and how owning plants has made your life better. And we're done! This has taken me three hours to do, but I did it! And this tree is clean, it's looking healthy, and I'm feeling very accomplished. And thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to support me and my channel, please hit like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below whether or not you have any big plants and how you take care of them. I'm curious to know. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!